can ultimately get in this match. Cervantes, Nerd Rage, and Drainer have tons of practice. So if there was a team to do it, it's going to be them. Yeah, and maybe we'll just see him hit him with the flex. If not, we're going to see him get locked down, unable to do any damage. The Pumpers, a cleave team going up against Change My Mind. Yeah, Nerd Rage under fire immediately. Cervantes, he's going to be dropping out that anti-magic zone in order to deny some of that damage. But Fried Kitty didn't use the Icy Veins. And there was no Vendetta used. Honestly, I feel like that cooldown usage from Cervantes wasn't necessarily the best, and that could be an opening for Change My Mind a little bit later on in the game. Drainer able to easily heal through this initial assault as Fried Kitty is taking most of the pressure, and Poike's going to have to do a good job balancing going and sitting for drinks and dealing with this pressure. Nerd Rage all over Fried Kitty. Bladestorm Cervantes on top of him once again. Acro drops a kidney shot as well as the smoke bomb. Change My Mind looking for some pressure. This is very important in the blind pick to really assess these compositions. I was expecting Change My Mind to play Shadow Priest Mage into this melee cleave setup, but instead they've gone with Rogue Mage, so it's making me think they were expecting something else, and now they're actually at a composition disadvantage. I would say that the Pumpers came out ahead in that mind game of the blind pick. I was expecting Fnobber's Unbalanced Druid to try and counteract the double caster, but the Pumpers just led in with their main composition instead, and Change My Mind are going to have to fight an uphill battle maybe with this Rogue Mage. They do have good crowd control currently secured on Drainer. Nerd Rage on the run, having to trade his most precious defensive cooldown, that die by the sword those swords rotating around his character reduce damage and parry incoming melee attackers and it's quite a long one he can't use that again for three more minutes there's a big window of opportunity here for change my mind if drainer is caught in a crowd control yeah drainer still struggling to top off nerd rage completely cyclone coming in from minpoike nerd rage charges in looking for some pressure on a fried kitty minpoike responds with the iron bark Fried Kitty could still be in a little bit of trouble. I think later on in this matchup, Nerd Rage and Cervantes will be able to turn their attention to Acro, making sure there's two pressure points for Change My Mind. And Minpoike's going to have to heal up both targets. But right now, is feeling pretty confident. Can go try to sit down for a drink. Drainer trying to shut that down. Nice cheap shot coming in from Acro. Sets Fried Kitty up for a full polymorph. And now Change My Mind getting aggressive on the Nerd Rage, but just unable to really find too much damage. All right, how long can Nerd Rage stay alive? He's an exposed target out in midfield. Acro looking for an opportunity, drops the kidney shot. No crowd control, though, for Drainer just yet, as both healers are max ranging Ooh. the opposing teams. Nice dark simulacron crown, or spell reflect potentially there on him in Poike's Cyclone. He's actually just going to re-stealth off the end of that crowd control and sit down for a drink. Death and Decay from Cervantes denies that drink. Good awareness, good drink denial by the team of the Pumpers as they try to secure a mana lead for a late game kill, potentially, but their pressure has been quite high throughout. Kidney shot once again on Nerd Rage. This is usually a scary moment for the team at the pumpers but drainer's positioning is making it quite easy to deal with drainer now crossing into midfield getting blinded now you would normally see a mystery for trinket he is going to trinket that's the most dangerous crowd control in the game so using your gladiator's medallion to remove it is an effective trade but now is an opening for the team to maybe switch to him moving forward vendetta now available we see maledix flying in i want to see them coordinate it's very important against these frost mages to go one into two afterwards with the dispel to try and force an ice block in the meantime Drainer caught in a polymorph. No Glider's Medallion as he removed blind earlier on. I'm in Poike in position to continue the chain with a Cyclone. Vendetta now committed to try and take Nerd Rage down, but there's just not enough damage, and Fried Kitty is still on the back foot. Both players in trouble. Fried Kitty wants to go for the kill, but he may need to ice block. Anti-Magic Zone stabilizes the game here for the Pumpers. A bit of a close call, but the Pumpers definitely come out behind. Yeah, definitely. And Minpoike was able to sit down for a full drink before that moment as well. So now changed my mind. Definitely a little bit ahead. Acro with a full kidney shot on Nerd Rage. Unfortunately, Fried Kitty not able to really connect too much damage. Just caught behind the pillar with Cervantes finding a polymorph on him, but fortunately not able to find the damage that he needed onto Nerd Rage. Now the Pumper's going to be behind the pillar, gripping in Acro. He has his trinket. If they can force that evasion here, it's going to be huge. Acro just decides to wait, play it calm, cool, and collected, using the Vanish to escape that scary situation. But now still has his trinket and evasion. So that was nice cooldown usage by Acro, not panicking in that situation. Yeah, most certainly good cooldown trades from the team of Change My Mind. And Poike has been able to maintain his mana quite effectively as we get closer to dampening. Drainer may need to look to reset that resource as soon as possible. Fried Kitty, though, gets crowd control. Nerd Rage in center field. 
No damage as the disarm acro. That was perfect timing, really denying any follow up. Now an intimidating shout onto multiple members. And this is what we love to see from Nerd Rage is just the mastery on that arms warrior. He's definitely a top contender with the likes of Blizzo as well. But unfortunately, he is a bit of a one trick. So while he is specialized on this, it might be devastating for their team overall. We do see tons of damage flying towards Fried Kitty. Icy Veins activated as cooldowns power up both teams in this position. Leg sweep and Initiation from Drainer, whereas the Paralysis doesn't look to be available. Minpoike is free to heal. Smoke Bomb opportunity set up here to try and bait Nerd Rage to Trinket. Does not fall for the bait. Holding on to that Gliders Medallion and now leading the charge for his team. Yep, Nerd Rage manages to survive. Nice ring of peace usage there by Drainer, keeping his team alive. Really not overreacting with any defensive cooldown. Still has a revival in Life Cocoon, dampening now at 4%. Then Poike once again looking to reset his mana. Unfortunately, not able to. Drainer charges in, trades out the Life Cocoon on this kidney shot. Then Poike trying to get some crowd, cross crowd control, but Drainer with a beautiful paralysis shuts that down. And now he should be able to escape. Nice counter spell there by Fried Kitty. Potentially changed my mind. Could be finding more damage here on the Nerd Rage, but with no interrupt available, Drainer should be able to easily top him off. And Poike moving in, potentially looking for some Cyclones, actually just sitting there trying to get out of combat, trying to sit down for a drink. But with Fried Kitty in a stun, really has to think twice about sitting down and regenerating mana. Yep, Nerd Rage with that Blade Storm, trying to get a nice block, but not finding it. Anti Magic Zone. Doesn't trade for cooldown so much in this position, but denies a window of opportunity to maybe force something more potent like a die by the sword. As Dampity ramps up, it's very important for Nerd Rage to hold on to that as long as possible so he can stay aggressive and overwhelm the enemy team. And that seems to be the case in the current dampening meta is to hold on to very powerful defensive cooldowns, then go for an all-in wave push, activating both defense and offense at the same time to stay afloat just long enough to put the enemy team down. So far, the pumpers have rotated their cooldowns effectively to make that happen, but Minpoike is managing his mana much better, so deeper into dampening, he can use expensive, powerful heals that Drainer won't have access to. Yeah, Drainer moving in, looking for some damage. Temporal Shield does get used by Fried Kitty, and you can tell the pumpers, every time Minpoike goes for a drink, they're trying to get as much counter pressure as possible. One Maledict does fly in, dispelled immediately by Minpoike, and Fried Kitty should be completely fine here. Blinking away, still trying to create some space. Full trink or full blind onto Drainer. He trinkets out. Kitty shot now on Drainer, or sorry, onto Nerd Rage. Good pressure coming in, but a swap over onto Acro. Asphyxiate gets used by Cervantes. Acro forced to trade out of Spain, but really not that big of a, de a deal. Uh, they weren't able to really pull out too many defensives there. No evasion, no trinket, no vanish. So Acro's going to be feeling completely healthy, but these swaps later on are going to be really scary onto Acro. Uh -oh. Another big swap with a potential sharpened blade. Acro trying to kite away. Kidney shot on Nerd Rage, but later on, Mimpoike, he's going to have such a difficult time dealing with this warrior death knight damage on both targets. You can tell that the pumpers are an experienced arms warrior death knight team, and switching targets against a restoration druid is an effective strategy to try and hit the target that does not have life bloom, which is the most powerful healing over time effect Mimpoike has. So what they do is attack the mage, make it seem like they want to commit for a kill onto him, and then when they crowd control Minpoike, they switch targets to the rogue, and it is unlikely that life bloom will be on the rogue as they were focusing most of their pressure on the mage. So the pumper is definitely with an effective strategy, almost catching a kill, but now on the back foot, dipping dangerously low as they're forced to use multiple defensive cooldowns just to maybe even stay alive. Drainer now out of crowd control, needs to connect some heals, but Smoke Bomb denies it. Nerd Rage leaps out to safety. Drainer tries to stabilize. Ursul's Vortex pinning them down in place, potentially for a Cyclone, but no, unable to find it. Dampening very high. Drainer's mana not looking too good. Minpoike with a significant advantage. Acro still with evasion to make a good trade and change my mind are trying to set up for victory but now finally damage is finding its place we see a cyclone redirected back onto Minpoike fried kitty now in an ice block off the back of that good play on the pumpers part now switching damage to acro the bumpers battling to keep themselves in this fight dampening ramping up higher and higher they've only got a couple more opportunities to find a kill before ultimately nerd rage is going to fall yeah drainer with not that much mana as well nerd rage getting lower moving forward on a fried kitty trying to take him down Poike responds with the Iron Bark. Fried Kitty should be able to hold on until his second Ice Block, but he's getting ah. lower. He gets interrupted, blinks away. Nerd Rage in hot pursuit, looking for an execute. Second Ice Block gets traded out. Drainer with the way of the crane, that additional damage, able to push through that Iron Bark from Minpoike. And now Fried Kitty, he's very vulnerable. He has no Ice Blocks left. Nerd Rage in a kidney shot. They need to try to find something here. Changed my mind in a lot of trouble. Once again, a Polymorph on Minpoike. Good Dark Simulacrum by Cervantes, stealing that spell. Fried Kitty gets interrupted. 
Sid, I don't know how Fried Kitty's going to be able to survive this next offensive push. Minpoike kept his team going for the late game, but now ultimately are against the wall here in game one. Will Minpoike be able to stabilize, get stunned on the trinket? Perfect crowd control here by the pumpers as that temporal shield needs a few more seconds to go off. They catch the iron bark, they stay in the fight. Drainer now locked down in crowd control. Nerd Rage in a ton of trouble. He needs to trade that rallying cry before a kidney shot. He does so. He had to preemptively use that as he cannot use it in crowd control. Now that buys time for Life Cocoon. Cervantes, I believe, Dark Simulacron to Cyclone. That could be an opportunity for Cervantes. They Cyclone up in Poike. Fried Kitty on the run. All three members trying to chase him down. Drainer needs a tiny bit more mana to use Way of the Crane. He can't get out of that Frost Nova. Fried Kitty gets pinned behind the pillar with that Ring of Frost. Nerd Rage, though, survives the stun lock. Leaps in. It's all or nothing. Can they take down Fried Kitty in time? He's under so much fire with that Maledix. He's trying to cut up the mage, but it doesn't seem like he can stay aggressive. Ursul's Vortex holds him out in the open. It's a race to the finish. Neither team left with much to work with. Avatar gets knocked out of the park here, boosting his damage, but Temporal Shield soaks up all of this damage, healing Fried Kitty back to full, stabilizing the match for an opportunity for Change My Mind to swing for victory. Yeah, no Temporal Shield, no Iron Bark. The Pumpers charging in. They really, it's do or die for them at this point in the game. They have to try to take Fried Kitty down. Fried Kitty with the Icy Veins looking to counter pressure. Life Cocoon denies it. Drainer with no mana left. Fried Kitty getting lower. Can the Pumpers do it? They do. They managed to find the kill with all-out aggression on Change My Mind. Nice set. And that's really going to put more pressure on them because if they do drop down here, we already know some of those top teams wait in the lower portion of the bracket. Change My Mind cannot go down to the pumpers. This is the upper portion of the bracket and the pumpers look to get on match point. Oh, Acro got found in stealth. That is going to stall out the opener for Change My Mind quite heavily. It's very important at Rogue Mage that you do not start the fight by being found in stealth. This is a huge advantage potentially for the pumpers. We do see Minpoike getting bashed up and maybe potential cyclones. This is where Fnobbers needs to be worried. Kidney shots available, so he goes into bear form. Drainer expected crowd control and activated the life cocoon, soaking up a huge hit. Good preemptive play on Fnobbers and Drainer's part to effectively negate this initial all-in from Change My Mind. They made it look very easy. That situation could have been explosive, but because of their premeditated decision-making, they get away completely unscathed. Yeah, Fnobbers going to be a little bit low. I like what the Pumpers is doing with their offensive push at the beginning, using Incarnation, trying to get Change My Mind on the back foot. Unfortunately, weren't able to get too many defensive cooldowns. Change My Mind still in a very healthy position. Full Polymorph now secured onto Drainer. Cervantes immediately responds with the anti-magic zone. That purple circle on the ground will be denying a lot of magic damage. So Fried Kitty's attacks won't be hurting Fnobbers quite as much now that that's faded. Once again, Change My Mind can look for an opportunity to take down Fnobbers, but He'll be very durable as long as he's sitting in bear form, avoiding some of these attacks. Now in moon can form, looking for crowd control on acro, finds the cyclone, trying to push in once again and find some damage. I feel like the composition that the pumpers has, their main win conditions are going to be getting Minpoike out of mana. They need to deny Minpoike drinks and try to find big one shots with the incarnation when that is available. Other than that, I feel like they're going to be behind on damage and crowd control. So the Pumpers are going to be looking to bring this to a late game. Snobbers once again in bear form for this attack, but a bit of an overlap of cooldowns. Drainer was exposed to crowd control, so he activated Life Cocoon before Polymorph was secured, but at the same time as Bark Skin. So that green icon and orange icon lighting up at the same time is a bit of an overlap on the side of the Pumpers and an opportunity now for Change My Mind to strike. Minpoike getting pressured by Cervantes, getting gripped back into midfield on this attack. Maybe they go for some Maledict plays onto Minpoike. Doesn't appear to be that they have enough damage as he is able to escape quite easily. Cervantes polymorphed up and it is likely that the pumpers need to rely on dampening for a kill against a restoration druid. Restoration druids and druids just in general have access to shape-shifting which allows them to remove snares and roots so a powerful crowd control combo from the moonkin is a solar beam and an entangling roots. You can't do that on a restoration druid because of shape-shifting so Fnobbers loses out on an eight second crowd control and it's very difficult to get a kill against a restoration druid because of that. Changed my mind with an assault. This was the opener that they opening that they set up earlier on by that cooldown overlap and again a cooldown overlap but although in this case might be necessary as the maledicts were committed absorbing a lot of incoming healing Fnobbers once again survives we do see a stolen polymorph Cervantes backing it up with crowd control from Fnobbers as they are trying to gun down for an ice block but Fried Kitty already saw this damage coming with temporal shield timed and should be bouncing back into the fight here quite 
quite soon. Incarnation from Fnobber, so he is running the uh, Azerite trait to get a Star Surge. After Star Surging nine times, you will have Incarnation activated for six seconds. He can squeeze that in to extend his Incarnation, so it's an extra six on it, or he can use it in between to try and bait out cooldowns. In that position, he didn't really get a lot done with it. I would like to see the timing on that. Arcanic Pulsar be a little bit better on his part. Now we see him in bear form, waiting for Kidney Shot. He actually left bear form to get Innervate up, so Drainer could save mana, but now he's blinded. Usually you'll see Innervate combined with Way of the Crane, because Innervate Innervate makes all the spells free for your healer. In this position, Drainer can't activate Way of the Crane because he was blinded and now loses out on that free Way of the Crane. Yeah, and interestingly enough, Drainer opted to sit that entire blind. I think Acro with no Vanish available. Drainer knew there was going to be no threat of a follow-up crowd control, so decided to sit that. If he has to shrink it to Polymorph for the next minute or so, that's going to be an opportunity for Change My Mind to have that blind available for a very long blind sap. So the Pumpers, they're going to have to look out for that in this game. Incarnation gets used by Fnobbers, looking to get aggressive once again. Fry Kitty trying to line a sight, trying to avoid some of this damage. Full Cyclone now on Acro. Temporal Shield gets used by Fry Kitty. Drainer is actually going to be moving in as well. And Poike finds the bash on Drainer, trying to deny him some offense. Now with the kidney shot on Flavers, changed my mind, looking to turn around the pressure, denying a lot of this incarnation damage. Yep. Good timing of counter pressure by the team of Change My Mind, pinning Fnobbers down and able to attack. Although Fnobbers' defense is looking solid throughout, he's in bear form exactly when he needs to to extend the match into dampening, where the Pumpers will look to overwhelm Change My Mind with damage onto three members. The damage over time effects Sunfire, Moonfire synergize quite effectively with an unholy Death Knight. Drainer looking to make a play here, activating that way of the crane. Big boost of damage towards Acro. Minpoike denies the kill with Iron Bark. Well timed into the feint. Acro restabilizes, bouncing back to full. Dampening has engaged. A slight advantage for Drainer on mana, but I want to see that Innervate way of the crane timed better. That could be critical for Drainer to find a kill later in the game. It actually could be what puts them over the edge to move to match point. Good crowd control here by Acro, followed up by Fried Kitty. Tons of damage. Will Barkskin be enough at this high of dampening? Ooh. Cervantes once again steals a polymorph, trying to carry the team with some counter pressure during this assault, but there's just not enough damage to back it up. Drainer forced to overlap Life Cocoon once again, and his Gladiator's Medallion. Huge cooldowns committed here by the side of the Pumpers as Change My Mind look to close. Yeah, and Fnabber's still low. He's not out of it yet. Anti-Magic Zone gets dropped out by Cervantes. Then Poike was able to sneak away, reset his mana completely. Nice Cyclone by Fnabber's on him and Poike. And Poike trinkets out, wants to keep his team aggressive. They realize they have a lot of momentum right now. Nacro forced to run away. All three members of Change My Mind do not have a Gladiator's Medallion available, so any crowd control on them will sit full, and maybe the Pumpers can find some sort of opportunity to potentially take someone down. And Poike in the backfield, though, feeling very healthy and safe. Could look for a drink again if he really wants to. The Pumpers have been really struggling to find damage in this matchup. Fnobbers is sitting in bear form a lot of this game. But you can't really blame him. Acro with a lot of pressure on that assassination rogue just keeps him sort of locked down. And I think that's why I don't really like this composition from the Pumpers. I could see them with some win conditions a little bit later on. Fenobers does have the incarnation coming up in 15 seconds. But outside of that window, it just seems like they're just on the back foot. Yep, Balanced Druid is definitely very durable in bear form. That is the one strength that it brings, but its damage output outside of Incarnation is very lackluster. In the meantime, Drainer is in a bit of trouble here. He's in a polymer, but Acro is getting counter-pressured away. Dampening starts to stack up. Good solar beam timing on the cast of Minpoike, interrupting his incoming heals and trying to create an opening with it, but just not enough damage, not enough dampening for the pumpers to start overwhelming. Change my mind. Minpoike establishing a significant mana advantage now at this point. Wave of the Crane gets activated, but it could have been comboed with the Innervate. I really think Fnobbers and Drainer should be combining those abilities. They may get an Ice Block regardless, but their mana is going to be critical for the rest of the match. Drainer could have already gotten a free Wave of the Crane earlier. This Wave of the Crane could have been free. That's an extra, what, is it 25,000 mana each? 50,000 mana? That's a big amount of mana. He just Innervates randomly without Wave of the Crane? This is big mistakes on the Pumpers. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. It could be used a lot better to conserve a lot of Drainer's mana, as it is unlikely he's going to be able to sit down for drinks. Unlike Benfoike, who's been drinking this entire game, but mana has evened out quite a bit. Acro now into a stun, has to trink it out. If they can get the Cloak of Shadows, Acro could be in some trouble. Another Polymorph secured. 
um, on Drainer from Fried Kitty. The crowd control chain extends. Fnobber's now the one in trouble. Barkskin does get used. Drainer trades out the life cocoon immediately. Wants to keep Fnobber's aggressive. Doesn't want to have to have him sit in bear form. Wants to continue the pressure, but unfortunately, all that momentum is lost. And Poike tops off the team. Now, once again, sitting in the back, looking for a full reset on his mana. And I don't think anyone from the Pumpers is going to be able to shut that down. Yep, and Poike with a clean reset here. Deep dampening territory. Fnobber's gets bursted off the back end of the smoke bomb. He's desperately trying to hang on. Cheap Shot sets up Fried Kitty. He gets interrupted by Cervantes. It all rests on Cervantes. Can he steal an effective crowd control? Lockman Poike out of the fight long enough for the Pumpers to get a kill onto either Fried Kitty or Acro. It's all on him to try and set it up. Double leg sweep into Cyclone. The Pumpers are trying to pause out the fight and buy time for their defensive cooldowns. Now leading the charge. They get Temporal Shield out of the way, at least during that push. That could create an opportunity, but the mismanagement on their inner Vate wave the crane timing has now put drainer so far behind on mana that they're not going to have a lot of opportunities they may have to wait another minute and 27 seconds i don't know if they're going to survive that long acro's pressure will eventually become overwhelming yeah who is the main target for the pumpers in this matchup they make these swaps onto acro but they don't really pull out too many defensives fried kitty still has both ice blocks I feel like Fried Kitty probably is the most vulnerable of them all, even though he has those immunities. And Poike is going to have to put out lots of mana in order to heal him through, especially as we move later into dampening. Cervantes with good pressure so far and has had good denial in this game with good, well-timed Dark Simulacroms as well as interrupts. Polymorph going to be thrown out. Fnobber's getting a little bit low. Acro getting targeted once again. Life Cocoon going to be used by Drainer to keep Fnobber's afloat. Acro taking a lot of Gladiator's Maledix here. Mintoike unable to dispel. Finally finds it. Heals through. Acro's going to get topped off. He had to trade out the Cloak of Shadows as well. This is Vendetta. Big pressure on Fnobber's. He responds with the Bark Skin. Blind onto Drainer. He trinkets out. So a lot of defensive cooldowns have been rotated through by the Pompers. Now changed my mind. This is an opportunity for them to potentially close out the entire game. And Poike getting aggressive. Kidney shot on Fnobbers. Another Cyclone on Drainer. And from start to finish, changed my mind. They had control of this matchup. The Pumpers, luckily for them, won game number one because if this was... ...series, they are looking to move forward here. They've already gone against some of the top teams. Changed my mind, a team that has not been able to break through to be one of the top teams in Europe, looking to change that, and the Pumpers trying to make a name for themselves in week three. Yeah, and Fry oh. Kitty gets gripped in immediately there, is going to be blinking away, and I think this is how the matchup is most likely going to be playing out. Changed my mind, they're going to be sitting back. They really don't want to push in because that allows Cervantes massive uptime in this matchup, and that's what they want to limit. You can see, actually, Cervantes, he's actually race changed. They went over to Alliance. He's going to be playing that Gnome, allowing him a little bit more uptime with that escape artist racial. It's very powerful, and sometimes we see these melee players implement it, especially when they play out against Frost Mages. You can tell that both teams had a composition strategy planned out for this series. Changed my mind. We're expecting this Death Knight Boomkin in the blind pick, but the Pumpers didn't lead off with it and ended up winning the mind game, allowing themselves to have the swing match advantage so change my mind have to win on the comp and map disadvantage such as this situation if change my mind can manage to pull off a victory here they will then take the swing match and have that advantage in a game five it's very important for change my mind to win this game compositionally their disadvantage though is the pumpers want to run the balance through it into this mage and shadow priest you can see that fnobbers just rains down devastation with damage over time effects and casted spells from the safety of the boxes cervantes can pull in the target and then get damage off himself later in dampening this damage will become overwhelming whereas fried kitty and valet need to cast on a target in the open so as long as the pumpers don't overexpose themselves later into the match they can just overwhelm change my mind with raw pressure now, big question that I have for you right now, Sid, is going to be around the Innervate and how that is paired with Way of the Crane, because last time you were quite critical of that. Is that something we need to be paying attention to even in the early stages of the game? I mean, the Way of the Crane can be the X Factor, at least to force an Ice Block or maybe a kill off the back of a mistake. I mean, we saw Raikou go down earlier in the tournament without Ice Blocking. There's definitely opportunity for that. I would like to see Fnobbers and Drainer coordinate on that front for a big push. I think that that Way of the Crane damage is a necessity to support Cervantes and Fnobbers as both a Death Knight and a Balanced Druid do not bring in a mortal, mortal Wounds effect, which is a 25% healing reduction applied to the target. So while they have a lot of self-sustainability, hybrid utility, healing output, they can avoid damage to the pillar quite effectively. They don't bring a lot of 
oomph in terms of their push. We see an innervate way of the crane timing here for Drainer, but not able to connect to a target. And this is the difficulty of coordinating it, is that you want to go in for that free push, but a, a mage is quite slippery and can avoid it, and Change My Mind dealt with that push perfectly. Sid, so where does the oomph come from? I mean, it mostly comes from the Miss Weaver Drainer, but also Fnobbers can back him up, saving up a lot of astral power for two star surges to combine together for a huge hit with that Rising Sun kick. So you definitely want to see the Pumpers coordinate that for an assault. I'd love to see the Maledicts timed in that push. Before dampening, they have to all three members coordinate. If they don't, they don't have enough damage to really get through the Restoration Druid heal over time effects. And I think that is my biggest criticism of most of the teams in this tournament, if not all of them at some point, is their Maledict coordination and timing has just been off. They have to go all together and be ready for a push. We do see a Cyclone secured onto Min Point Gate, maybe an opportunity to find some damage off the back of it. Doesn't appear to be the case as dampening is going to be a necessity outside of those Maledict windows. I think the Pumpers could get cooldowns beforehand if they coordinate well. I, I really want to see a better coordinated effort on their part. They're just so focused on shutting down Min Poike. Look at Min Poike's positioning in this matchup. Anytime Fenabras and Cervantes are there, he looks to run away. He just wants to create space and basically run all three members of the Pumpers through that Frost Mage, through that Shadow Priest, where they can really deal the most amount of damage. Cervantes now getting Life Cocoon from Drainer, and Drainer has just been throwing Life Cocoon cocoons out left right and center just trying to avoid damage keeps Ravana's topped off and it really is a man efficient way of keeping your team alive it, it's crazy Mimpoike is doing exactly what you're saying he almost looks like a magnet every time he moves across they just skitter around like pieces of scrap metal to that powerful force of Mimpoike and he's gonna have plenty of mana to deal with but it looks like Drainer has barely casted a single spell here so far both of our healers are prepared for the long winter of dampening like squirrels hoarding acorns I, I love the the imagery and the metaphors here from rich campbell his stylings and poetry in game number three but this is a battle this is not about being delicate this is about power who is going to overwhelm who likely deeper into dampening of course the pumpers have set up this composition to counter this mage and shadow priest so change my mind you would think are playing at a disadvantage and i'm curious to see how they can try and turn it in their own favor been getting bursted down quite heavily before dampening. Cervantes really giving chase here, trying to pressure even further. Manages to pull both Barkskin and Iron Bark just as dampening begins. Now with an innervate way of the crane timing, they could try to go after Minpoike. Yeah, I think Mistweaver Monks, especially with the counteract magic PvP talent, which Drainer is running, is super effective against the Shadow Priest. Basically empowers your Renewing Mist, your main heal over time effect. So it does increased healing when a target has a magic damage over time effect. So Drainer is basically a counter to Valet, at least earlier on in the game. So it's really up to Fried Kitty and Valet to make sure they're dispelling off that Renewing Mist. So Drainer has to use some mana. As you can see, he has such a massive lead so far. And Poike manages to finally sneak away and I don't think the Pumpers are going to be able to shut them down. Finally, they do. And Poike didn't get too much mana there. Fnobber's doing a good job with the Cyclone. Now Fried Kitty under a little bit of pressure. Temporal Shield gets used. It absorbs a little bit. Heals him up a little bit also. As Fnobber's and Cervantes still looking for pressure in this matchup. Uh, I like the Pumper strategy. And so far, it seems to be working. And Poike actually struggles, especially when they make these target swaps onto him. You can see the damage over time effects from Fnobbers actually adding up now onto Fried Kitty, onto Valet. Cervantes taxing Minpoike, making sure he can't drink. He has to keep heal over time effects on all three members. Now, I think the Pumpers, with this strategy, it's looking like it could potentially win them this game. I mean, they've definitely got momentum. They've got mana advantage. They've got cooldown advantage. And you can tell that this is the composition they crafted to deal with these spell cleaves. And it appears to be super effective, although not so strong into the rogue mage. But because they won in the blind pick, they can always set up a good situation for themselves. And Poike under fire here as dampening starts to ramp up at 10%. Would like to see some way of the crane usage. Drainer's going to go in. Can they deflect Drainer's push? Valais unlocks him. Is there any follow-up on the end of that? It doesn't appear to be the case. Ursul's Vortex at least pulls Drainer back. He was not able to connect in that attack with Way of the Crane. Gets denied once again by Change My Mind. They've done such a good job every single time Way of the Crane is used by Drainer. It's either a poly, a fear, Ursul's Vortex, all of these things being used. We already talked about the fact that when you are in that Way of the Crane, you are super effective at getting through any of those roots, those snares that a Frost Mage can be throwing out at you. So 
so they really do need to use some of that CC make sure that that can get casted onto this healer because Drainer is going to be the one that can bring the oomph that Sid mentioned earlier on in this matchup and the pumpers are all about that oomph. Yeah, it's definitely a panic mode for Change My Mind. Drainer, if he gets effective damage off, he gets effective healing off as well and he can easily top off his team and it turns the favor in the tides of the pumpers so crowd controlling him is of the utmost importance and you can see Change My Mind with the way they're playing. They realize that, they know that exactly what you have to do against a Mistweaver Monk. Silence on Fnobbers trying to slow him down. Valet trying to keep his team afloat. Activated the Vampire Embrace a little bit earlier on to try to save a little bit of Minpoike's precious mana. Innervate could be enough for Minpoike to potentially top off his team, but Fried Kitty, he's caught all by himself, all alone. It could be potentially the Ice Block. Void Shift got used by Valet. If they have to overlap the Void Shift and the Ice Block, this is a disastrous situation for Change My Mind. Multiple members under fire of Change My Mind. Crowd control secured on to Minpoike as they fall increasingly behind. Innervate available in a few short seconds. If they can combine that with Way of the Crane, make a big three-man push, they can easily knock over. Change my mind. Minpoike with a significant deficit in mana at this point. The pumpers are slowly but surely overwhelming their opponents. Change my mind have found really no opportunity to swing back in this fight. They silence up Cervantes to deny anti-magic shield, but his health does not even go below 90% now with that crowd control not available for Drainer. He's going to come out of this polymorph beyond diminishing return. I want to see an innervate way of the crane timing here. I want to see one big push by the pumpers. They have an opening and they're just not taking it. Well, I will say though, in this war of attrition, the pumpers are definitely coming out on top. We saw the in card able to pull the void shift and it's able to pull the first block. Here it is, the Innervate, the Way of the Crane. Cervantes, though, is trying to deny a drink instead of pushing for more cooldown, so a bit miscoordinated. Drainer now gets polymorphed and denied on his Way of the Crane. They were relying on Fnobbers, but he's now counterspelled and unable to dish out damage. Cervantes is Frost nova and unable to connect, and change my mind, stay alive through that Way of the Crane assault, at least stalling the match, but you can't win simply by stalling if you're changing my mind. But they get so much stall here. I mean, you're going to see those defensive cooldowns come back from Mpoike. The block isn't going to be ripped away. And now all of a sudden it's going to be the pumpers that have to use that life cocoon here to stay safe. Filet though, going to be taking a lot of pressure here. Fnobber's about to get out of the bag. Yeah, could be the dispersion from Filet as he trinkets out of the cyclone coming in from Fnobber's. Nicely done. And Poike almost completely tapped on mana. Nice polymorph secured by Fry Kitty as he activates the icy veins to try to take Cervantes down. Normally Death Knights are very tanky early on, but a little bit during the late game when dampening is high, that Death Strike's not going to be nearly as effective. And that's when Drain is really going to have to use a lot of mana to keep him alive. So an opportunity for Change My Mind, but things are not looking good. And Poike once again looking to run away, but Cervantes, Fnobber's, Drainer have been able to shut him down each and every time he's looking for the drink and Big that's push. one of the difficult things about this map right Kitty now with temporal shield gets interrupted on frost trying to kite away needs to hold on to that ice block as long as he can and Poike has to try to sneak away for a drink Fried Kitty might just have to trade it out. If uh, Minpoike can get out of combat here, it could be a little bit of a reset for Change My Mind. Definitely important, but unfortunately, Drainer's able to shut it down. And the Pumpers, they just have Change My Mind in a chokehold. And we have seen every time that Drainer can actually connect when he's in the way of the crane, so much is done. Haven't been able to pull that ice block yet, but we can see in just 18 seconds, Drainer's going to have that option again. And Incarn is going to be available. Maybe one last push. We've hit that critical mass in dampening. It may be enough to do it. Mpoike already going to have to use these big defensive cooldowns. Valet's going to be kicked as well. He's taking so much pressure, going to try to position himself away from the fray. Oh, Fnobber's finally being pressured at least below 90% health. They changed my mind. haven't been able to move the health bars of the pumpers until this point. But maybe, just maybe, they have a chance to get a kill here. Now at 40% dampening, but Minpoike has nothing to work with. He's constantly getting denied on the drinks. Fried Kitty tries to trade and uh -oh. stay ahead of this, but he may ultimately need to ice block and trades it out. Minpoike caught in the leg sweep. Drainer punching away at Minpoike. Maybe it would have been worthwhile to just wave the crane and try and solo him at this point in the game. Just get as much damage out as possible. The dampening is overwhelming. Change my mind. The pumper's completely restabilized in this position and are looking to close this game out. Minpoike's got basically nothing to work with fried kitty against the wall here in game number three the lay doing his best vampiric embrace maybe enough for them to hold on and poike actually sat down for a drink but fried kitty he has no ice blocks and poike may be too far behind to actually keep him alive iron bark denies for now valet 
trying to stay alive as well. Caught into the cycle, and Drainer pushing with the way of the crane, trying to take down Fry Kitty. Temporal Shield should be able to deny the kill, but now change my mind. No Iron Bark, no Temporal Shield, no Ice Block. These are the moments where the pumpers can really make an effective push and try to take someone down. But Cervantes having to play a little bit defensive right now, increasingly vulnerable as dampening gets higher. And with re no AMS, no anti-magic zone, there's not much he can do. And Poike sneaks away once again now that the pumpers are forced so defensive. And Poike might actually get a reset on his mana, but at potentially Fry Kitty's life. Cervantes chasing him down. One Maladic connects. Fry Kitty's stuck. He needs to blink away. He needs to kite. Drainer there looking for some damage as well. Can they take him down? And Fry <laughs> Kitty holds on by a thread, but ultimately not enough. And Poike with greedy plays. But in that situation, sometimes you... Mist Weaver, the Death Knight, and the Windwalker. Instead, is going to be Nerd Rage on that uh, warrior here. So we saw the Windwalker Death Knight actually take a game of Method Black on this particular map and the way they were able to do it was having their Death Knight Volkovic stay in and stop a lot of these drinks and when he couldn't actually do that anymore for the rest of Druid we saw kind of the entire team fall, fall in and push over that Frost Mage and I want to see if, Frost, uh, if the Pumpers can do the same thing to the Frost Mage of Fried Kitty and that way they can set themselves up to be in a really really good situation for later on in the tournament. This is my favorite style of opening too it's called the no you come over to my place they're both going to hang out at home they're, they're they're texting each other right now saying no come over no you come over no you come over let's see who is going to be the first to break <laughs> it's a stalemate between these two teams uh, Fry Kitty, Valeum, and Poike changed my mind. They want to sit in the open, forcing the pumpers to take a lot of damage, I, I guess. The pumpers, they don't want to go into the open. They don't want to take all that damage. They want to be sitting back at the pillar, be able to grip people in. Changed my mind. They're going to be the ones that budge first, moving in, looking for some damage early on. But still, with that grip, Valet now a little bit behind. Nicely done by Drainer with the Ring of Peace. And Poike in stealth moves in, trying to get some heals onto Valet. Triple Fear comes in from Valet. That could potentially set up his team. Icy Bane gets used by Fry Kitty. Changed my mind, looking to get really aggressive, but they just can't find the damage. Nerd Rage, Cervantes, they're gonna be line of sighting. Drainer now gets Vortex, but I think he should be fine. Psychic Horror does get used. Nice defensive, intimidating shout there by Nerd Rage. And Drainer, although he had to use his Life Cocoon and the Fortifying uh, Elixir, that's really all he had to use. And those aren't, those, they, they aren't that long a cooldown, especially to trade out um, to the Icy Veins of Fried Kitty, and I think the Pumpers actually came out ahead in that exchange. Now, we see them doing briefly there the traditional dance of the pillar. We see them hesitant to start the opening. How often do we expect to see different things like resets here, Zico? Well, the, the resets, oh, we see Nerd uh -oh. actually in Ooh, big uh. trouble. <laughs> Drain is going to be cycloned up. Nice kick on that cycle from Wimpoike, but Fry Kitty sneaks in that Polymorph. going to net them the anti-magic zone. And I think Nerd Rage, it depends if Fry Kitty can get another Polymorph here. He does get that Polymorph, third Polymorph, but the Cyclone is stopped. Nice silence oh. from Belay. They might actually take that Nerd Rage right here. <laughs> All right, our minds have been oh. changed. I was asking about resets. We're just going to get a whole new game, and it's going to be game. Good. Unlike Nagrand Arena 4 and Assassination Rogue, Apple Rose is going to be able to dish out tons and tons of pressure, and Fry Kitty will also have an easier time landing polymorphs onto Drainer. So this map is definitely a double-edged sword. I really like this pick from uh, Change My Mind as they go and open. Game one was definitely a close fought fight here has changed my mind. Look to try and stay alive in the upper bracket against the pumpers, but this Arms Warrior Death Knight Mistweaver comp was devastating. Can they pull it off here on Blades Edge Arena, the most chaotic map in the pool? It is quite easy to lose track of your team. It's very difficult to kite effectively. Fried Kitty already falling behind in the initial exchange. Trainers Gladiators Medallion has traded for blind. Both teams making predictable trades but creating openings ring of peace knocking fried kitty out of line of sight of minpoike but they are not giving chase instead switching targets to acro up top and this is what i want to see from the pumpers if fried kitty is able to escape immediately switch your attention to a different target now acro is forced to abandon the top of the bridge cervantes and nerd rage now have a choice do they advance forward and overextend instead deciding to use death grip to bring the mage to themselves but with no stun fried kitty can immediately escape back to the bottom yeah, and one of the main utilities the Pumpers has available to them is Cervantes PvP talent, Dark Simulacrum, 
that's going to allow him to steal spells from Fried Kitty or Minpoike. It's going to be up to Fried Kitty and Minpoike to make sure that he's not getting significant spells. If they give him Polymorph and Cyclone, that's extra crowd control that the Pumpers are going to have available on him and Poike and create windows of opportunity. So Fried Kitty is going to want to try to bait out that spell when he can and then just throw out at Ice Lance, which is going to be completely useless to Cervantes. So that's definitely going to be a little mini game that uh, plays out huge in this game. Icy Veins attempt here on Fried Kitty's part to take down Nerd Rage. Will Dream has no gladiator's medallion. However, Drainer correctly trading Life Raccoon before the crowd control was secured, soaked up a huge hit and allowed Nerd Rage now to stay aggressive. With Avatar activated, his damage boosted. A stolen polymorph secured on him in Poike will actually pre-iron bark it as well. Good predictive play, top level decision making, but still the momentum in favor of the pumpers. Will Fried Kitty stabilize through this way of the crane assault? He's gotten control of Drainer with Acro's setup on the back of that vanish. Good teamwork between Acro and Fried Kitty stabilizing that situation but now nerd rage is trying to lead the charge good stun on the trinket of minpoike this could be an ice block potentially forced from fried kitty ice barrier soaking up some hits maledict attempt by drainer as he moves in to try and add a little bit of extra ah. damage a little bit of extra spice to get that ice block and it is very important as the misweaver monk to be adding in damage when you can yeah and the spice was nice it ended up getting them the ice block in that situation Poike still potentially looking for drinks on this map as well, but so far has been denied. There's just been too much pressure on Fried Kitty. Kidney shot with a smoke bomb onto Nerd Rage. Anti-Magic Zone gets dropped out by Cervantes to keep him alive. Bash now onto Drainer, and Poike looking to get a little bit of aggressive, but really hasn't had the time or opportunities to find many Cyclones in this game. Blind gets traded out from Acro onto Drainer. He trinkets out immediately. Fair trade. Fry Kitty still getting low. This could be a second ice block. Ironbark looking to deny, but after Ironbark fades, that's an opportunity for the Pumpers to get the second ice block from Fry Kitty. Polymorph secured on Drainer by Fried Kitty's aggressive moves. Kidney shot for cross crowd control. It looks good in this position, but Fried Kitty just not getting any damage out. Denied on that Ray of Frost immediately by Cervantes. Now the Pumpers can start to push forward, adding a little bit of extra oomph with that way of the crane. Temporal Shield is taking the brunt of this exchange. Now that will be healed back almost immediately. We'd like to see an Asphyxiate or Paralysis. There's the Asphyxiate on Minpoike, denying his heals for a few seconds as Drainer tries to add a bit of extra damage. Nice denial on the Polymorph with that leg sweep. We see Maledic flying from Minpoike towards the Warrior Nerd Rage, but dispelled immediately. Good double fear. This could be a potential Ice Block forced before dampening, which would be critical for the team of the Pumpers. Moving forward for the rest of the match, the Disarm denies the Kidney Shot to peel and save. Iron Bark needs to be enough for Minpoike, and it will be in this position. Mana, though, still very even. Can Minpoike sneak away and regenerate on Blades Edge Arena is now the question. Yes, yeah, Cervantes could be in, or sorry, Nerd Rage could be in a little bit of trouble. Full Cyclone secured onto Drainer. Die by the Sword has to be activated. If they can continue this train, Drainer does not have his trinket. Trades out the Life Cocoon and gets interrupted. That's a smart play by Drainer. He Life Cocoons, it opens up his School of Magic. So even if he gets interrupted, he has that safety net of the Life Cocoon. And now Drainer can potentially just t fully heal him up. And Poike sitting up top. This could be a full reset on Poike's mana. Things are looking good here for Change My Mind. Yeah, definitely. I mean, game number one wasn't one-sided. It came down to the wire. So here in game five, it's still anyone's series. I mean, Poike did not generate nearly enough mana, though, I don't believe. He's trying to sit down for a drink once again. Will he have the time is still the question. He was able to regenerate quite a huge lead over Drainer. They need to get through an ice block and then get a kill very soon if they want to find victory. I love these disarms on Acro during their push, so he's unable to use Kidney Shot and deny their assault. That's good cross crowd control by the Pumpers and nice adaptation aggressively on their part. Crowd control secured on Minpoike. They get his Gladiator's Medallion on a Paralysis, one of the most usually non-threatening crowd controls, which now means Intimidating Shout will be available. Dark Simulacrum onto Polymorph will be a lot more dangerous. There's the intimidating shout. They need to get an ice block with this push. Can they stay on target long enough to find it? They're all connecting as three members. They need an ice block here and now, but they're just not finding it. Asphyxiate, will that be enough to deny Minpoike's healing? Way of the crane. They need just a tiny bit more damage to push Fried Kitty over the edge, and they get it. The second ice block. They stay in the fight. Yeah, this is massive for the pumpers. There's not going to be another ice block available for Fried Kitty for another two minutes. And Poike has to hold on for quite some time. Iron Bark still available. Good offensive push on the Nerd Rage with the full polymorph on the Drainer, but a beautiful ring of peace. Denies a little bit of damage. Disarm on Acro. Heatrink gets out. 
And now there's a swap opportunity in this matchup for the Pumpers on to Acro a little bit polymorph. later on. No evasion, no trinket, full polymorph on in Poike. Nicely done by Cervantes. These are the dark simulacrum, simulacrum spells we're looking for him to steal in this matchup to turn the tide in their favor. Acro's very vulnerable right now. They could easily take him down as well. Drainer gets interrupted. Nerd Rage in a kidney shot, still in some trouble. Acro's the one that's on the back foot. He has the vanish. Cloak of Shadows has to trade out everything to survive. And Poiki's man is doing quite well. And with the Innervate, he should be able to top off Acro. Neither side has much left in terms of defense, but Minpoike's drink secured them a huge mana advantage and potentially the series for their team. Everything off the back of that. Now they just need a tiny bit more damage to take Nerd Rage down. During that assault. I was expecting way more pressure. Dark Simulacrum committed by Cervantes. What did he manage to sneak away from the team of Change My Mind? If they can get a good crowd control chain within the next 19 seconds, they can easily close the fight. Drainer needs to get in there. He leads the charge. Everything rides on this push to take down Fried Kitty. Can they stay on target long enough? Fried Kitty blinks away to safety. Sharpened Blade gets activated. Nerd Rage leads the charge, but Acro deflects with Kidney Shot perfectly timed during that crowd control. Will it be enough? Uh -oh. Acro is trying his hardest uh -oh. to keep his team in the tournament. He stalls it out but i'm not sure if he can keep it going and he can't the pumpers advance three to two feed versus the fake zebras we're all tied up one and one who is going to find themselves on match point who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament keep in mind folks we're doing a brand new thing you have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in battle for azeroth 